enter a world of true crime. From cold cases to serial killers, missing persons, and more. 100% he did this. I'd go off in the fantasy world. How much more lucky can you get that you're not on death row? You want to know what we know? My name is Jay. This is Guilty of Crime. Hello, everybody. It's Jay with Guilty of Crime, and thank you for hanging out. I've been seeing people hang out today and uh, wait for the live. I saw this morning people commenting, and uh, yeah, the reason I'm bringing this show today is because there's a lot of um, speculation, obviously, flying around, and people are asking for more and not to let this get out of the spotlight and for the police not to let this go and not to let it die down so that um, Jennifer Soto can just disappear and uh, not be held accountable. Now, a lot of people in the Florida area are contacting me. First of all, I have a lot of Florida people and locals contacting me and giving me information about the town, the people, what they know, who they know, um, a, a bits about the area. And then I have a lot of moms contacting me um, saying, you know, you're doing really good work. Please keep giving us more content. Um, you know, be that mama bear for everybody that uh, for all the moms out there. They want we want to say that's what the viewers are saying. That's what the comments are saying. And um and hello, everybody. I'm going to be gifting memberships today, so stick around. Um, we've got quite a show. We've got uh, boots on the ground, so to speak, today, and that's where the information is coming from, and it's going to be confirmed by logic and reason, everybody, and we're going to see it for ourselves. So I'm going to show you a video mm -hmm. of the local area, the memorial, and some other things that, um, let me see, make sure I get her name right, Kate. Her name's Kate, but her channel is Kate Takes, and she didn't make this content for the channel. She messaged me first, and that's why I appreciate you all. So she messaged me yesterday saying, recently I was watching your YouTube channel with the Jennifer Soto case. I'm currently in Hunter's Creek, stopping by the memorial, and just wanted to offer any footage if you would like, as I know you aren't local. So I get this message as things are dying down, right? I haven't, um, I can't do Jennifer Soto or Madeline Soto or any of these every day. Now, what Kate takes, and I'm going to share her channel because she doesn't do true crime. She loves Disney, but she's also a teacher of 20 years and a mom that wants to see justice and doesn't want this to die down and also doesn't want Jennifer Soto to get more protection than Madeline Soto did. And so I'm going to bring that to your attention as well. Everybody, Kate Takes is here. Thank you, Kate Takes. I'm going to play your video and we're talking about what's going on with the case and the boots on the ground. I appreciate that. And the, the detective work, so to speak, that you're doing is helping us to figure things out and see it right on the screen. See that we're trying to do something and we're trying to make a difference and that we're not just speculating and trying to make things up. We're actually doing it. And Yolanda is another thing we're talking about because I want to clear things up today. And the reason I did this also is for people want it. The moms want to see justice. The locals want to see more on this case. And um, everybody all around, I think, is just curious and the, the cops can't, please can't let us know what they know. So let me tell you what we're talking about today and then I'm going to read a few comments from my page that are on the other side of this. They don't want more content. They want me to just stop right now. Um, let me put a picture up of some of the pictures Kate Takes sent me so that I can um, share her work. Thank you, Kate. And we'll put her link up when, when I'm not super busy. I can share some of her stuff. But let me um let me grab her. Let me grab um 
Let me see. I'm trying to find the pictures that I... Well, I'll put this up for right now and make it full screen and bring myself to site. So we have videos of... And you're going to see, we're going to have videos of what Kate went and saw. And yeah, she's very good in helping. Thank you, Kate Takes. We're going to be following you now. Let me tell you what information and a little bit of the conversation. So she went out there and she went to the memorial. She went to the grandma's house and she went to the jail and she went all around that area and she knew exactly where to go, which I wouldn't necessarily have known. She also knew where the dumping site was, the body dump site. She also knew where the flat tire was. And she also knew that the flat tire was really far from where the dump site was. And we're going to have that. I'll pull that map up. And she made it put it in there. It's, it was six miles. So six miles where the flat tire was from the dump site, which mm -hmm. goes to tell us that more than likely... It wasn't a ploy that he, um, that Stephen Stearns just said he had a flat tire, everybody. He probably really had a flat tire, and then when he did, he got noticed. So there's a lot of information today, and um, yeah, there's there's a lot to share, and we're going to watch the video. Uh, I can play the video while I'm talking about this. I think that might be best to do, and then we can slow things down a little bit. Um it's from a iPhone perspective and there's no volume on it so I can talk through it. So let's play the video and I will talk about what information today we're getting from this and two key points that are now confirmed. Number one, a lot of people were speculating that the party wasn't at um, grandma's house. They were, they are asking, not speculating, but people were asking, was the party at grandma Yolanda's house or was it at Stephen Stern's mom's house? Now I'm not a local and I'm not a police officer. So I said, I didn't know. Now we know it was definitely, definitely, definitely at Yolanda's house. And we have pictures of it boots on the ground from Kate's camera and her video to your eyes. Also, another thing that is confirmed and more than likely, we, we see where the tire was uh, flat and how far away. And we also see pictures of the dump site area. And you'll see how the bushes look. And you'll see that it was a sloppy job that was probably in panic. So I'm going to play this video and then I'll talk as we go. And I'm trying to figure out how to pull up all the pictures. All right, let's make it full screen. Again, I can talk through it because... And actually, let me slow it down here a bit. I'll start it over. Let me go back to normal and then start it over. This is from Kate Takes channel. I'll share that after. I'll share her link. Let's see if I could go even bigger than this. It's from an iPhone, everybody. So it's hard to make it bigger. But let me. I'll pull up the pictures after and we'll talk about it. You can see, actually, you know, should I slow it down even more? Because we're going really quick. There's the grandma's house for the birthday party. All right. It took me a minute to get there. So let's start this over again. There's a lot of information. There's Jennifer Soto's residence and gated entry. That's where Jen and Maddie lived, not Stefan Stearns. Okay. All right. So. Wow, the chat's flying. There's a lot of people in here. There's Grandma's house. The birthday party. Backyard photos with the streamers. And I'm going to bring those pictures up after so you can see them in still shot motion. So we do know for a fact that it was at Grandma's house, Yolanda Soto. And she knows more. And somebody summed it up in one comment. It wasn't a super nice comment, but I'll read it for you since in 30 seconds she told us the whole case, case closed. There's the church in the area. Drive from the church to the school. Location stated to have dropped her. Uh, location stated to have dropped her off in the morning. Everybody, did you see that? Hello, Brass Yeti. Wow, this is really good. Kate takes. I'm gonna go back really quick. That was the church that was supposedly where 
she was dropped off where Madeline Soto was dropped off. So we're flying through this video. I'm going to try to pull up some of the pictures so we can talk about it because I have so much to talk about today and I don't know how to get it out fast enough. So there's the church. I'm going to keep playing. We've got eight minutes of this drive from the church to school. There you go. Kate takes knows what she's doing there. Everybody. Thank you. Kate takes. And I don't want to go silent on everybody. And we know, yeah, thank you. It's video while you're driving. We appreciate that. We 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 thank you. We can always play it again, slow it down, have a, one video of just that. It's okay. Yeah. There you go. Can somebody, when you guys get a chance, hit those like buttons. I have 187 in chat. I'm going to be gifting memberships today, but I only have 40-something likes. So if you can please hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. There's the county jail, Osceola County Jail, where Stefan Stearns is being held and where we want Jennifer Soto to be, everybody. We want her to be there. There's the flat tire siding six miles from the memorial site where the body was found, everybody. And I could play this again while I talk because I didn't even get to my key points yet because there's so much to talk about today. Hello, Jojo for show show. All right. There we go down the memorial site. Just look at this road outlying area on the way to the Madeline. Soto dump site. I hate saying it that way, but that's what the police call it. And I'm trying to figure out how to share the extra other footage or images with you. Okay. I'll do that next. There's so much, guys. Look at that area. It's just a bunch of trees and like grass and wooded area. And that her body could have been dumped in there, everybody. She could have been dumped in there. And we probably wouldn't have found her her for a while, everyone. I just want you to know that he could have done a lot better job at hiding the body. But the thing that it does tell you is that he was in a panic. He was in a rush. He was sloppy. And it wasn't something that he had planned out. Or he wouldn't have put her in a bushes that were very open. Now this is the way to where Madeline was found. And we're going to see the memorial if we haven't. Because again, I'm bringing you the footage. I'm trying to read comments, put things up, and find all the pictures for you. So I'm very busy. It's a term cop used not meant to be disrespectful. Absolutely. The dump site is not meant to be disrespectful. And I wish there was a better term for it, but... It's what they call it. Now, there's Kate Takes Channel in the, yeah, it was a panic dump in, in, the, in the chat. Everybody, please hit that like button so I can bring more content and you can find it in the algorithm. St. Cloud is a smaller city. It's 20 minutes from her home. There's no real reason for her to be there. He must have had a connection to the area and have known it. This is from Kate Takes. Now, we, ha we had a whole conversation, and I have some text messages to go over, but certainly, Kate, you're helping me out by sharing this information, and um, if I had planned better, I would have brought you up. However, I did plan this show around your schedule, so in the future, if you want to be on, we can do that, too. Okay, everyone, here's the memorial location. Look at that memorial. It's massive now. And again, this is iPhone footage that Kate so graciously took to share with us. And um, yeah, she didn't have to share it with any of us. And she's sharing it with all of us. So let's thank her for that. Look at how massive that is. And look at the bushes behind it. I don't even know. I'm not from that area. So I don't know if those are bushes or like trees or just like some kind of greenery. I'm not really sure what 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 those are called, like specifically what the name of that is. But as you can see, it's not very thick. 
it's very thin and I, I don't see anything being hidden in there too well, which we're going to see more uh, still images so you can see. Look at that beautiful memorial that we wish wasn't there. We wish it was that we're glad that it's there, but we wish that it wasn't because this didn't have to happen, everybody. It did not have to happen at all. Yes, what an amazing job that Kate did. Being a local, we appreciate that. Thank you, Kate. I'm trying to find some of these text messages here. Wow, we're watching this beautiful memorial. Thank you. I haven't seen such a good uh, job of the filming. I've seen real quick snapshots of it, and that's it. Yes, everybody, hit that like button, please. Let's get let's get this out there, right? This boots on the ground stuff is important to clear up what we're talking about today. So as you're watching this, I'm going to tell you why I came here in the first place. What information I'm telling you. I'm actually not just here to show you footage. But I want you to see the footage. But I also want you to see a couple other things as well. And it's the things we talked about last night. So you guys asked for more information. We have more solidified answers about the Madeline Soto case. And we got it from the boots on the ground that Kate's doing for us and that we went back and forth with, forth with to um, bring this to you. So we had a good conversation yesterday and last night. And, um, you know, we put um, we put a lot of work into this, both of us. Kate, I'll give you all of the credit. I don't need the credit. I'm bringing it to everybody. But we put a lot of effort into this and... Uh, I think people don't understand that, that we're trying to help keep the awareness and help get Jennifer locked up or at least talking. And um, we don't want her to not talk because then we're not going to get justice, everybody. So while we're watching this, I'm you guys are seeing that we're sharing the positive things. We're sharing the memorial. We're doing the right things. And I'm not trying to just speculate here and bring you stuff that's speculation right i'm trying to bring you real true footage real true uh answers and everybody's asking these answers so let's see how far we are and so i can see if i we're almost done i might put it on a re clip while i talk about what i came to talk about today and don't forget to smash that like button okay so there's the images of where it is Oh, we don't want that. No, 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 no. sorry. So we did not want that. Let's get that out of there. All right. Road of the Memorial is quite busy. Yeah, that one. You guys can look that up yourself, but we're not trying to harass people. We're not trying to go over there and do anything nefarious. So our notes are Road of the Memorial is quite busy with traffic. The chain link barbed wire fence surrounding the lands with chained and locked gates six miles plus from the tire siding. It could it could not be faking a tire to dispose. It well, could not be faking tire to dispose a body as location six miles away. So what that means, obviously, is that if Stefan Stearns was faking a flat tire, he would have faked it closer to the dump site. Everybody, common sense and logic, everybody, common sense and logic. OK, we're not trying to do conspiracy theories here. And um, thank you. The overwhelming amount of people want us not to let this case go cold. So that's what I'm trying to do. But I also get hate for this as well. So let's see what this says. So grandma's house is definitely definitely the location at the birthday party as we have the video comparing the house to where she, Madeline was. Jennifer Soto's residence is in a gated complex with no entry. Okay. So I'm going to play this on a re- replay while I talk to you so you can see it again okay I want to tell you common sense what's that I don't know what common sense is and you want to know why because as I'm putting this together and I'm staying up really late to bring this to you and I'm having nightmares reading the PCAs and I'm trying to get this out there I have people commenting on my page like one comment that says that I'm that I'm sick and twisted for even saying that it might be a love triangle between Jennifer Soto and Madeline Soto. And 
that Jennifer Soto is covering up with Stefan Stearns, that I'm the sick one that brought that to the attention. So, no, I'm not. It, it wasn't my theory. The theory came from lots of other people. It came from reputable people that think that there was a jealousy issue. So that is not my not my theory, but I brought it to you. All right. So I'm glad to see you following up. No worries. No one talks about her anymore. <laughs> Uh, had nightmares from this case too. Thank you, M. Far. So I'm not doing this because I want nightmares or because I want attention. I want attention to this case. Now I've given you the good. You guys see all the good things that are going on here, right? You see the people that are coming together. You see the video that we're seeing. You see the memorial. You see that we're banding together as a community and of moms to try to get Jennifer Soto talking arrested whatever she's culpable for okay so no thank you i definitely am not and comments on my page like this i will leave up but i won't tolerate if it gets any further than what this is so i'm going to read this comment and it's on it's on my page it says speculations and it's right on there it's Aunt alexandria gorgeous from an hour ago and alexandra if you want to come on and apologize for saying that to me on my page you can, but speculation, she solved this case in 60 seconds, everybody. So just so you know, here, I'm going to read it to you. Speculation and opinions with no research is not helping anyone. Can we stick to the facts, please? Here's the facts. Party was at Madeline's grandmother's house, Jen's mother at her residence. She's been interviewed. Simple research people. Party was the 25th of February. Madison, Madeline Soto's birthday actually was the 22nd of February. She went home after the party. In fact, Stefan drove her to grandma's place where the party was being held and back home from the party on Sunday, the February 25th. Do you hear that? So this Alexandra, gorgeous person, knows all of this, and she's telling us to just stop talking about it because uh, because she knows, all right. Um, so yeah, police are still investigating. You're absolutely right, but they're not telling us because they don't want to mess up the case. The car is not the cases, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna finish reading this because Alexandra, Alexandra knows what we don't know, something we don't know, I guess. All right, so Stefan took Maddie to the birthday party and took her home. All right. Jen says she was working. If you know about casual positions, you know that you don't get to pick and choose your shifts or whether you do overtime or not. That's up to your boss. And you may be called in any day for any amount of time, which could be true. You're right. But doesn't matter. She still wasn't at her daughter's birthday party. She's still not talking. And there's still a terrible interview that we're going to watch after this again with Plunder True Crime. Okay. So, so guys, Jennifer Soto wasn't there because we're making excuses for her right now. You could be called in, especially in the travel or tourism industry. So let's give her a pass and, and talk down to me about what I'm doing instead. That, that makes sense. All right. So she says, I have my own beliefs, but I'll gather all the information before I sit in judgment of strangers as she's judging me on my page and telling me what to do. Okay. Now. Maybe over-opinionated, judgmental people shouldn't be asking silly questions. That's to you guys. We're asking silly questions. The crime crew and the community, we're asking silly questions. So maybe over-opinionated, judgmental people shouldn't be asking silly questions. And people who invent or regurgitate rumors as facts should think about how Maddie would feel hearing such convictions after all she went through. Okay? So, yes, we want to think about Maddie, but... Yeah, she, she she needs to go mow her yard, right? Go take care of your own stuff, okay? But I did respond to her, so and I responded to her in a respectful way. But I'm bringing you what you want. I'm bringing you, and Kate Takes is bringing you actual footage. We're bringing you logic and reason, and we're not over here trying to speculate. That's the last thing I want to do, okay? So... If you have those kind of comments for my page, you can put them. But am I going to read my page and expose your comments and let people comment on them? Yeah, that's not my problem. That's a your problem for posting that stuff on my page. So I answer her back and say, yes, we're discussing this today. 
and keeping the case going. I'm being flooded by messages from mothers asking me to keep covering the case. You can do that. You can do a channel on your own maybe and share your content with us. I respect your opinion and I expect the same for mine. There has been research and unless we keep the videos to 30 seconds, we have to bring it more and say it over and over. All right. Hashtag expose Jennifer Soto. So that was my comment to her. Yeah. If you don't like the content, don't bother tuning in or telling me how the case is solved or how you would solve it because you haven't solved it and nobody's solved it. So we're here coming together as a community and trying to do something in a positive way and not speculate. So there you go. If you're going to leave comments like that, then you're going to get responses like that. That's all. I have to say about that. So let's, um, let me show you Kate's channel. You can see it in the chat. I'm going to gift memberships after I'm done showing you some of these things. And, um, yeah, I hope we get some news too, everybody. Now news is going to have to come from the po the police department. What's coming from us right now is news from someone that's in the area. It's news that what we're saying about certain things, we're answering questions is what it is. We're answering questions that everybody's been asking. Okay. So what I'm saying is by doing our own investigation in the St. Cloud, Florida area and going to Yolanda Soto's house, we're using common sense and logic with a little bit of detective work. It goes a long way. Two things that we confirmed that everybody was asking in the last video and you can go back and watch it. You, you can go back and see all the questions. I keep seeing them. Did Stefan Stearns really have a flat tire or was it just a facade or, you know, a, was he putting that up as a, to, to pretend like he was had a flat tire so he could dump the body. I couldn't even say it right. Stefan Stearns, with common sense and logic did have a flat tire because the dump site was six miles from the flat tire and lots of people saw him, which is what got him caught. So I don't think, and I'm going to show you the map. I don't think that he would have stopped there and done that in a busy area and then dumped her off in an area that was six miles away in a area that's not really covered. So common sense and logic and traveling out there to go see the area. And when it looks like you can see it's right there. I'm going to pause it. Let me go back. Let me go back. I just saw it right there. I, I don't want to show that right there. All right. So intersection listed at site. Stefan, Stefan Stearns was seen changing his tire. Hickory Tree and Nolte Road. And then there's where the body was found, everybody. So he does seem dumb enough. He is dumb enough, and he did a factory reset, which probably brought more attention to him. And, yeah, no, it wasn't six miles. The dump was 30 feet away. Okay, Michelle, that, so I have the driving, um, I have the map up. If you want to send me something that shows that, I wasn't out in the area, so I don't think the flat was six miles away. It was across the street. Okay. Thank you, Janine. If that's the case, then um, we, Kate, um, Kate and I will say we would retract that. I didn't, I wasn't able to drive out there. Um, let's see. Was watching Spanish TikTokers and they said it was blunt force. Yeah. Four months pregnant. Yeah. That, yeah. That's a lot different. And um, okay. Let me get to that in a minute. So six miles away. If you see the flat, that's what I have on the map from kate so we're gonna have to go over that they actually said hickory tree and nolte was the flat tire i must have overheard another thing okay so this is where we're trying to answer questions if anybody mm -hmm. knows this see i'm getting we're on one we're all on the same live live and i have one person saying that they found her across the street and another person in the area saying it was six miles away Janine, that's how they found her body because the flat tire was there. I think the confusion is the name of the streets are similar. Okay. If that's the case, I know that they found her because they, yeah, they were looking in that area and I believe they had um, cadaver dogs is what Jen said and other people. So yeah, six miles isn't a huge stretch from where they would be traveling. Um, Kate, if you have anything to say on that, uh, Melly says same thing across the street. Okay. So was it a ruse? It 
Could have been a ruse, but that was a dumb spot to dump the body. If you look at those trees, I don't even know what those are called. The bushes that he put her, that was really way too close in there. So there's a bunch of, I don't want to show her stuff, her information, but let's, um, oh, we got Mr. Detective. All right, let me pull that down so I can show something else. And then we can go back and forth about if it was six miles away or not. I don't know because... I'm not in that area, but we will say that it probably wasn't a ruse. Maybe it wasn't six miles away, but that was a bad area. Now that I see the bushes where he dumped her and the birthday party was definitely at Yolanda's house. And we know that because we've seen the house in the backyard and the pictures. And why isn't Yolanda talking? This girl that comments on my page says she is, but we don't know what she's saying. Another thing, everybody. Let me take this down and I can see. I thought someone said it was seven minutes from Maddie's home. Yeah, there's so many things that we can go back and confirm that. Um. Anyway, so the videos were great. Kate, we'll get that um, confirmed and find out while I'm doing other things and when I'm playing other videos. I'll show some pictures. Now, what I wanted to bring attention to today was why did... Yolanda Soto say Maddie was a child with so many fears and she didn't like to sleep alone. And nobody was doing anything about that. Why was Yolanda not telling everybody on the news, the Spanish news stations that Stefan Stearns was the one that brought her to the party and then took her home? I didn't, I didn't hear that. Maybe, I don't know. I, didn't, I just didn't hear that. Why? Well, she was talking in Spanish, definitely, but there was people that translated it, and um, I didn't hear any of that, and um, I wish she would talk more, and I wish we would have cleared this up from the beginning, because people are asking, and I didn't know, but now we have images of the house, and we ha now we have to clear up where the flat tire was from the dump site. If it was, in fact, right across the street, then he was nailed that, but he still, I still don't think that it was a ruse. I think he actually had a flat tire due to the donut tire that he had on the back and the, the body wasn't hidden. Everybody, mm -hmm. as you know, and you saw the leaked photo. Thank you, Bud Bundy. I'm going to say thank you because, um, I appreciate the positive feedback and I'm trying to bring you the best information that I can boots on the ground. When I heard that Kate was going to go out there and show the video and clear things up, I'm, I was very excited and I'm still excited. So now, Melly Michelle, if you would email me, we can do a translation video. I would love that. I would absolutely love if you do a translation, um, uh, a translation of it. I'm going to play some of it in a bit. I think we need to do a whole other video for that. I would love that because the translations that we have now are kind of terrible. So people stopping for flat tires. Yeah. I, I think he really did have a flat tire too. Absolutely. Okay. Rana, I'm going to take your word. Arona, I'm going to take your word because I'm in California. I'm in the Bay area of California, which is all the way across the country um, in Florida. I don't even like Florida that much. Um, it's the murder capital of the world. I've been to Disney World once, and I don't, I'm don't. i a little bit afraid of the murder capital of the world. So that being said, if you say it was legit right across the street, we're going to take your word for it, and um, we're going to go with that. And I'll look into it further. But let me show some of the pictures. Let me see if I could bring those up so I can show you a little bit closer what I'm talking about. And um, you know, I trust what you guys say. I look into it and um, I do the best I can with reporting what I have. And not being a police officer, which I've been asked many times if I am. I am not a police officer. Um, I give you what I can. He did have a flat tire. Okay. he. There you go. He did have a flat tire per KPD and the photo show donut on his car captured by CCTV. Yes, I did see that. Everybody, please hit that like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I have 400 people in the chat. I'm going to be giving out. Um, I'm going to be giving out uh, 
memberships and uh, I would it would be great if you could uh, hit that button and um, I can get more in here. Let me do this. Let me see if I can go on the video now on the channel now and give some memberships. If not, I'll do it when I'm playing the video. All right. So this is great, everybody. I see. Um, let's see what he's Florida murder capital. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. No, that's uh, Florida. Florida is the murder capital of the world. From what I hear in my studying of true crime and murder, it may be Chicago, but I don't think so. I think it's Florida. Um, Chicago may come in second. It still scares me. And here we go. If we have 10 out of 10 people saying, and you're from the area, that two Hickory Tree Road is across the street, then it was across the street. But my point was that it was a flat tire and not a ruse more than likely. So let me show you some of the video here and then I'll, I'll be in the chat. And um, can you get a membership, Sherry? Turn your memberships on. I'll get you a membership. If, if you turn your memberships on, I'm going to gift them. So um, let's do this. Let me go into this image so I can show you a little bit better. All right. You can see there and you saw the video. So there's the house. And that was on the bat. That was on the uh, that was on social media and Instagram picture. There's the side of the Madeline Soto Memorial, and then there's the actual picture of the house that Kate took. So you can see the house down there, and then you can see the Madeline Soto birthday pics there. Oh, my bad. Let me get out of here. I didn't mean to share that. No, the tire is way too far from the site. See, that that we don't know. That I'm going to have to say I'm not sure about that. But in my heart, I truly believe Maddie wanted to expose him, and he had to get rid of her. Yeah. Excuse me, helicopters. Focus on two different areas. Ellie, we're investigating. Yeah, you know, it's confusing when you're not close to the area as well. But having people that are in the area that can tell us and tell me it, absolutely helps to clear these things up. So uh, Gray Hughes investigates, has been doing this uh, case for a long time, and he has complete accurate information and views of the dump site, and he has it all mapped out, right? I could have went on there to see what he has, but I wanted to show real-life footage of the area of the uh, mom's house of the dump site of the memorial and show you what love that they have going on. So Sadie's mama, thank you for gifting a guilty of crime membership. I appreciate that. I'm going to do that too. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We're still going here. Um, I've been talking for a long time now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play some, um, I'm going to play a video and give out some gifts and answer some questions. All right. So, that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to put myself aside and do that. We all got to put ourselves aside, especially for cases like this, and try to stop and bring accurate information. And if you stand corrected, if you get corrected, stand corrected. And, uh, you know, you can say you were wrong and let's, let's get the right information out there. So let's do this. We want to hear the apartments of 107, everybody, and we love plunder. So we're going to play that right now. Stefan Michael Stearns, an apartment 107, the sinister setting of many crimes against Madeline Sophia Soto. Are Jennifer and Stearns partners in crime? Or is Jen the victim of a dubious man who set his sights on her young daughter, Maddie, from the start? Is Jen a victim too? A woman who was none the wiser? With so many people pointing fingers at Jen, she has promptly deleted her Instagram page, but not before a great TikToker was able to grab plenty of screenshots of her photos with Stearns and Maddie. So her Instagram was public at some point. She just decided to close it, but it's gone now. But at the beginning, um, she was making posts about Maddie going missing and how she looked. And then she had all these pictures that I just screenshotted once I heard about him taking into custody because of the things that they found on his cell phone. For a second there, I thought Jen was holding a sign that proclaimed, Stern's the best dad ever. When I look closer at the photos of the couple kissing, I see that her sign says, best day ever. Terrible. His says, bow chicka wow wow. I can't help but be reminded of the photo of Chris Watts making a biting motion at his wife when I see the way Stern's is pretending to bite the crown of flowers on Jen's head. 
Sunday, February 25th, 2024, as the sun went down around 6.23 p.m. on Sunday, February 25th, 2024, Maddie enjoyed the setting sun as her 13th birthday party came to a close at her grandmother's house, and she walked toward the water, flailing pretty blue streamers in the air. At some point likely that night, Maddie was driven home to the infamous condo on Santa Maria. I'm working on gifting you memberships right now as we watch this, and I'm trying to make sure that I also answer your questions, put your qu uh, questions up, address each one of you as fast as I can, and uh, keep the chat going, everybody. Hit that like, subscribe button. Also, if you'd like to email me, email me or Instagram me or Facebook me, and we can work together on a case. If you have boots on the ground information or you want information, message me. I would love to work with anybody that wants to be a creator, is a creator, or, you know, has any information. Kate is not a creator of content. She is a Disney junkie, what so to speak. She loves Disney, and she doesn't have anyone to talk to about this true crime stuff. So she has us to talk to and us to share her information with. And she felt comfortable in coming here and doing so. So everybody, please, you know, give her the credit that she deserves and thank her. Maria Drive in Kissimmee, Florida, about a 20 minute, seven and a half mile drive from her grandmother's home. As the night fell on Florida, was anyone home to greet her or did she enter the condo alone? Jen told the media that she was working and couldn't attend the birthday party. What time did Jen get home that night? Was Stearns already there that evening to greet Maddie? Like Madeline's grandmother told Telemundo 31, the 13-year-old girl was so afraid to sleep alone that she would sleep in bed with her mother or grandmother. Whatever transpired as midnight bled into the dawn, the sunrise over number 107 would reveal that the evil that had been afoot in that dark condo would soon be unfolded to the world. But what exactly happened from Sunday to Monday? Jen was asked directly by the WFTV reporter, what was the last thing, I guess, the conversation that you two had, you and your daughter? Jen answered, um, we spoke about her birthday party. She had a birthday party on Sunday. Uh, she had a great time. Uh, I couldn't make it because I was working, but she had an amazing time. She was so happy with all her gifts. Uh, I, I told her goodnight and, um, yeah, that was it. All right, so we're going to listen to this again and listen to and watch what we're watch how shameful this is. And anybody that tried to make me feel bad about showing this or um, pointing the finger at the mom, maybe you're her friend and you're her local friend trying to stop us from talking about and exposing her. But when I watch this shameful interview and others, it makes me not think twice about what I'm doing. She went to school. <sighs> um. But that happens from time to time. She's got ADHD, uh, her memory. <laughs> She's very forgetful. Um, so yeah, there's no way to track her right now. Cause I have, well, the detective does not have her phone. Uh, but this isn't normal behavior now. What was the last thing, I guess, that the conversation that you two had, you and your daughter? Um, we spoke about her birthday party. Mm -hmm. She had a birthday party on Sunday. Uh, she had a great time. Uh, I couldn't make it cause I was working. But she had an amazing time. She was so happy with all her gifts. Uh, I, I told her good night, and um, yeah, that was it. I that was it. Jen said, "Period." Dot. Like, leave it alone. The story ends there. Was she being intentional? And see, the story doesn't end there. Everybody, we're not going to let it end there. And the people that are telling it to let it end there are sus to me as well so you're suspicious if you're telling me to stop because i'm not doing anything that's wrong i'm trying to bring attention to the case and make sure that the right people are shown into the light and we're also supporting the community here and answering questions and letting moms speak up about how they feel so if you think that then you can waste your time and put that on my page, but I'll, I'll read it. Originally obtuse, so she wouldn't trip herself up with lies? Jen doesn't specify if she spoke with her daughter in person that night or over the phone, FaceTime, or via texts. Perhaps Sunday night really was the last time she spoke with her daughter. 
But what she would tell police about seeing Maddie getting ready for school at 8 a.m. the next morning seemed to conflict with what Jen told the press. When speaking with Channel 9, Jen quickly switched to the topic from Sunday to the next morning, absolving herself of guilt by saying, I wasn't the one who took her to school in the morning. That was my partner. She said that statement so quickly that some people misunderstood her Spanglish cadence, thinking Jen said, I was the one who took her to school in the morning. A strange and confusing timeline would emerge regarding the events of February 26th, 2024, the same day that Stearns accidentally performed a factory reset on his phone. But we don't know what time that action occurred. Jennifer Lissette Soto gave Deputy Joseph a verbal and sworn written testimony as to her movements that Monday, which would immediately conflict with the timeline that she gave the media. Let's compare what Jen and Stearns told. And before we get into that, remember, put your gifting memberships on. Make sure that you're able to get it. And um Make sure you're able to receive gifts because I gifted five and we'll be doing that often around here so we can get everybody in the crime crew and we can all help each other. Hold police and the media about their actions on Monday versus the timeline police uncovered via interviews and video surveillance retrievals and witness statements. Monday, February 26th, 2024, 7.35 a.m. Sheriff Mina says that video evidence shows Stearns discarding items in a dumpster at the family's Kissimmee apartment complex at 7.35 a.m. on Monday, February 26th. Investigators later found Madeline's backpack inside that dumpster. 8 a.m. At approximately 8 a.m., Jennifer claims she saw Maddie getting dressed for school, presumably in their condo, number 107. So that's a perfect place to stop for a second. Bassett Baby says, and this is the overwhelming response from this community. Just keep this case hot. I want justice for Maddie. Do not want this case going cold. Absolutely right. There's so much overwhelming evidence for, about this case on the part of Stefan Stearns and Jen Jennifer Soto that we cannot let this case go cold and let it die down. And also another thing is I hear she, Jennifer Soto is hiding out. The local people are saying that she's not in a mental hospital. Maybe she was, but people say, which is still good information that they see her car, maybe at her mom's house or a family member's house. So keep that in mind. Any of you local people, it's just, tip it in. You can message me. Um, I, I want to hear where she is and keep an eye on her. Make sure she doesn't skip the country and go to wherever she's from, wherever her family's from, because her grandma, her mom doesn't speak, or she speaks English and Spanish. So we don't want her getting away, everybody. That would be a terrible injustice. At 8.10 a.m., according to the affidavit for arrest warrant for Stearns, Detective Brian Moore states that a license plate reader captured Stearns' vehicle with Florida tag IYLL82 driving away from the school only 10 minutes after Jen claims she saw her daughter getting dressed for school. How could Stern have made the nearly six-mile trip from the condo to Peace United Methodist Church? on Town Loop Boulevard in Orlando. Or Maybe that's where the six mile is coming in from. So we're trying to clear this up, everybody. We're, we're being humble about our mistakes. If we make them and we say the wrong information, we're being very humble and kind to each other. If we say something wrong, none of us are perfect. And I do most of my videos live. So I can't backpedal. Okay. I'm not editing anything out or to Hunter's Creek Middle School in only 10 minutes. Was Stearns doing a drive-by with Maddie in the car because he knew cameras were capturing him? At 8.19 a.m., according to the Orange County Sheriff's Office, Stearns is seen returning to the Kissimmee apartment complex with Maddie, not alive, they believe, in the car. 
Anywhere from 8.25 a.m. through 8.40 a.m., Stearns claims he dropped Maddie off near Town Loop and Hunter's Park Lane and watched Maddie leave his vehicle and walk towards Hunter's Creek Middle School. As Stearns was driving away, he claims to have seen Maddie searching through her book bag. Again, this is awesome footage, and I'll play it on a loop afterwards, and I'll also just post a link to the video so you can just watch the video without all of this so we'll have the video for you just separate and i'll play it again and answer questions and hopefully you get gifted a membership today everybody if not pick up pick one up you won't be disappointed i promise for headphones however investigators would find maddie's backpack and laptop discarded in a dumpster likely thrown in there about one hour beforehand by stearns was it stearns plan to claim that maddie tossed her own items in a dumpster near their condo in an effort to run away and live in the woods after turning 13 Whatever his sinister plot, Stearns was soon found out. Detective Brian Moore wrote that after an extensive canvas of the area and interviews with the victim's family and friends, he learned it was unusual for the victim to be dropped off down the street from the school and not stay in communication with family and friends. Sometime after 8.40 a.m. or so, Stearns told police he had began heading home. When he attempted to stop for a vape juice, now you see this big time gap and when people say to stop looking at Jennifer Soto, maybe she was called into work. That still makes no difference about what she's not telling us and why she's not talking, why she lawyered up, why she's hiding out. Thank you so much, Monica, Casey, Sweeney. And that's from another country there. That's uh, what is that? Euros. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. If I'm wrong, correct me on what, uh, what, form of uh, currency that is anyway anyhow let's keep watching and, and we'll talk some more and play the video again at a nearby vape shop but determined it was closed so Stearns went home to Kissimmee Around 9.30 to 9.40 a.m., Hunters Creek Middle School normally begins classes. Approximately 9.40 a.m., once Stearns was home for about an hour, he went back out to retrieve a vape juice and then run errands, he told investigators. Between 1 p.m. and 2.30 p.m., according to the Kissimmee Police Department, Stearns was seen... No, the police are not saying anything either so that they can have a really solid tight case however when they did the press conference if you watch the press conference again they said the mother is cooperating she did one interview she did lawyer up everybody and we don't know what capacity she's working with the law enforcement because of course the police cannot tell us however if she's involved we're going to see another kayla montgomery and she's going to flip on stefan stearns now I don't care what you say. That's my theory. And that's probably what's going to happen. There's no way she's going to go tell on herself and, uh, and not bring him in and not tell what happened. If they catch her, she will, if they catch text messages or her in the photos or any of that, she's going to flip and we'll be hearing her loud and clear. Everybody uh, mark my words on that. Driving a silver 2010 Lincoln MKZ with Florida tag IYLL 82 on Monday, February 26th between 1 PM and 2 30 PM. And in the area of highway 192 and old Hickory tree, as well as old Hickory tree road and Nolte road. About 2.30 p.m., Stern stated he returned home and stayed home at approximately 2.30 p.m. That's five hours after he allegedly left home at 9.40 a.m. to get a vape juice and run errands. What on earth was he doing all that time? Kissimmee police believe he was changing that flat tire and likely disposing of Maddie. They wrote on Facebook, during this time frame, it is believed Stearns had a flat tire and might have been seen changing it in this area. If anyone has any video footage or remembers 
seeing Madeline Soto's or Stearns or the silver 2010 Lincoln MKZ with Florida tag IYLL82, please call Crime Line at 1-800-423-TIPS. And if you heard that, we're still trying to keep it alive. Uh, plunder, true crime wants to keep it alive. All the people that want to keep it alive are the ones that want justice. We don't want to give Jen Soto or anybody else that's involved a pass. So if you're telling me to give her a pass, especially on my page or my community, you're telling my community to stop talking about her. No, we won't. We're it's hashtag Jen Soto exposed, hashtag exposed, hashtag Jennifer Soto, hashtag exposed. We're getting her out there. We, she needs to tell the cops, the po the police, whoever she needs to tell what happened, and let's get justice. Let's keep going. At around 4 p.m., per Deputy Joseph's report, Jennifer claims she discovered Maddie did not make it to school. At 4.43 p.m., the Orange County Sheriff's Office reports a missing person call coming in from Jen to report Maddie missing. Jen claims that she had searched for Maddie prior to calling police, going to her mother's office to see if Maddie had walked there. At 7.48 p.m., Deputy Joseph arrives at the condo to take statements and make his report, which states in part on February 26th, 2024, at approximately 1948 hours, I, Deputy Joseph, responded to Village Park Drive, Orlando, Orange County, Florida, regarding a missing juvenile. While on the scene, the step-parent stated he dropped his daughter off at school, and when the mother went to the school, the daughter was not there. The parents searched within the neighborhood in places where the daughter may have gone. The parents could provide a location where the daughter may have been, but yielded negative results when deputies checked the area. The juvenile was entered into FCIC, NCIC, and Amerisus, as missing disabled. By February 28th, 2024, the gig was up. Detective Brian Moore observed. Hey. Absolutely. And that was a beautiful timeline right there. And that's why I wanted to show this. And Paula is killing it at Plunder, um, bringing this information. Um, <laughs> could probably beat the tar out of Stefan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would love to. Uh, I think we would all, the crime crew would tear it up. And uh, yeah, then we wouldn't let the real justice happen. But yeah, I definitely, if that was my daughter, I wouldn't be hiding from you all. I'd be talking to you all. I'd be out searching in the very beginning when she had the opportunity. And I wouldn't be doing anything that she's doing. Trust me. Uh, all right, let's get work, a little bit more and then we'll watch that video again and answer questions. Plainest photos and videos from Stern's phone, including several different pieces of clothing to include patterned underwear, shirts, blankets, and sheets. Simultaneously, detectives of the Orange County Sheriff's Office were executing a search warrant at Stern's house on Santa Maria Drive, where the victim and her mother live, and the detectives searching the residence were contacted and confirmed they found the same distinctive clothing both in Stern's room and the victim's room. As of Saturday, March 30th, 2024, the newest entries in the crime case dockets for Stearns are three entries dated March 25th for notice of provision of supplemental discovery. A notice of provision of supplemental discovery is a request for additional questions or updated responses to previously answered discovery requests. Supplemental discovery is used to find out what has changed since the initial disclosure to uncover any new information that is crucial to the case. According to the Osceola County Inmate Search, which lists individuals... In and Kate, you're great. I just rhymed. You're great because you went by also the jail where Stefan Stearns is being housed. We're going to watch that video again because now we have 525 people in the chat room. I, I hope everybody could hit that like button. I, I'm not asking for anything else. Just let's get the like button so the algorithm can get going and we can share this footage that you made, Kate. And we appreciate it so much because we're looking at this footage from other people. I don't know what sources, where the, the source is from, but 
we have that source and it's you and we're going to play it again. Davey, that is another thing. We haven't heard from the bio dad and I wonder if he was just absent, just not present a lot and he doesn't have much feedback or if he's talking to the cops. I don't know. I don't know that many people knew what was going on other than the three that lived in the house and maybe if Stefan Stearns was on that on telegram, a telegram, I think telegram, I think that's an event. I was too many apps uh, sharing the photos. We know he was sharing the photos that night or sharing something. I'm a, don't, I didn't say that sharing photos that night at almost midnight, uh, some kind of photos. And we know what content was on his phone. So, all right. That's what we, this is where we want him. And we want to see a picture, a booking picture of Jennifer Soto, at least for, Neglect of her child, at the very least, and lying to the cops because there's no way that she saw her daughter at eight o'clock that morning. And if she did, she was the one that helped unalive her, right? Incarcerated in the Osceola County Jail, Stearns was born on April 25th, 1986, which means he will soon celebrate his 38th birthday behind bars, which begs the question in my mind, was this Six foot two inch tall white male with brown eyes and black hair ever Devil. married before? Does Stearns have any biological children of his own? Was Jen hoping she would be the single woman who would waltz him down the Disney wedding aisle and give him a ready made family? Was she willing to do anything to satisfy his sick desire? That beautiful little girl, everybody, and you know, whoever commented on that, that's not just us saying making up stories about her mom maybe trying to satisfy his sick, twisted needs that he had. She let this go on for far too long. And if she didn't know something, then she failed. She failed Maddie, and she failed as a parent, and she failed all of us. She failed the world from not having this beautiful little angel here. Even if she would have found out later, and Maddie could have had therapy or done something. It would have really damaged a lot of things, but she could have fixed it and she'd have at least been alive. Jen Soto took that away from us as much as Stefan Stearns did at this point because it was her job to take care of her. Desires. Jennifer was born on March 2nd, 1988 in New York, according to her state of Florida marriage record from her previous marriage to a man named Stephen. That short-lived 2015 marriage was already in trouble by the following year. Jen turned 36 years old this year, only one day after Maddie's body was found. Certain folks view her either as a devastated mom who has lost everything, a woman who may have not known anything about the suffering of her teenage daughter. Others are livid that Jen isn't behind bars with her partner Stearns. One curious salvaged photo shows Jen and Stearns surrounded by balloons that read Happy 35, perhaps taken last year on her 35th birthday. Sadly, videos captured of Maddie from her 12th birthday show the young girl attempted a smile, but it keeps fading. Her pain is palpable. One shudders to think of what she had endured up until that point, with Stearns entering her mother's life in a dating capacity at least since 2018, when Maddie was only seven years old. Were any suspicions of wrongdoings by Stearns the reason he and Jen reportedly broke up? Yeah, I'm sure there was a lot of reasons why they broke up. And a reason why he, when he broke up with her, he told somebody, a friend of his, or, you know, we heard it through the grapevine that he said, no, I'm dating a spicy Latina now, a, a little spicy Latina. So we know Stefan Stearns liked to date younger for a fact. Um, he had a 14 year old girlfriend when everybody else was like 22 or maybe even 25. I don't know, but people thought he was weird. He was doing weird stuff like saving his own semen and he had a ton of photos. And if you read the PCA, you know what the photos are. So it's, they're horrifying photos. I don't even want you to have to read that up and got back together over the years? Is this a case of the folly of two people driving them to do unspeakable things to a child? Oftentimes crime cases feature a madness of two individuals 
who joined together to commit horrid tragedies. Did Stearns at any point unveil his true intentions to Jen? Or will further investigation reveal that Jen Soto was oblivious, completely lost in her own haze of depression, over-medication, and a bipolar fog, so much so that she paid no mind to the horrific events happening in her own home? Was she truly blindsided the afternoon that she went those are all great questions, everybody. And if you're standing up for her, one of those people that says, leave her alone, she's still culpable. I don't care what. If she was in a blind haze of drugs or whatever, she, sleeping pills or working too much, she should have been there paying attention to her daughter. And we know that she wasn't hard up for money because we know that her mom had some bit of money. Stefan Stearns was getting money from his mom and i heard that possibly her mom was paying for her apartment or helping her so she wasn't that hard up for money that she needed to work all the time and on her daughter's birthday even if she got called in she could have said no so ridiculous to pick up maddie from school and her daughter was nowhere to be found or had she conspired with stearns to create a thinly veiled timeline that day one that cops were easily able to refute if jen ever noticed anything amiss with her daughter's condition did jen get maddie a counselor or any trusted person she could confide in or did she bury her head in the sand and hope that she truly had a perfect little family of three that she posted photos of on instagram and not the stuff of horror movies as the 36 year old mother of maddie did Jen desire to marry Stearns and give him a baby or babies before her biological clock stopped? Was she so desperate for a nuclear family that she ignored any inklings of things being not quite right in her home? Did she mistake Stern's attention shed on Maddie as that of an innocent dad type, showing his bonus daughter normal fatherly care? Whatever the motivations and actions of Jen and Stern's, viewers continue to keep track of this true crime tale in order to witness if Jen will eventually be arrested for anything in coming days or weeks. All right, so you guys can always go over to uh paula plunder a lot of people know her she's got a ton of followers i've been doing this for like 10 weeks now so i'm pretty new i've got an awesome following right now you guys the crime crew is doing great um yeah you guys are killing it over here and you're killing it for deception detective he just got back into youtube and everybody gave him such a warm welcome m far i believe she buried her head in the sand and blamed every strange uh, everything strange on her diagnosis she also blamed madeline and all of her diagnoses as well adhd she was forgetful she how many things did we hear her blame maddie for um yeah, there's she sure blames everybody else but herself. Um, all right, so we're gonna play that video again, and then I'll show you some uh, some. I'll, I'll put up put up some of your comments and answer the best I can. No way, Jen is in a haze with that many images and how long it went on. Not only that, there had to be marks on her little body, KJ. It's so graphic for me to even think about, but you're absolutely right. I, I don't even go any further than that. What you said just nailed it. I, I Yeah, I don't even want to think about what marks were where and why her mom didn't know. All right, I'm going to put, put that video on again so you guys can see it. It's not very long, but we're in here chatting and I'm putting up your comments. Hopefully you got gifted a membership or you grabbed a membership. Hopefully you hit that like button. Um, and, um, you know, hopefully you were already subscribed. Um, all right, let's go to this and then I will put this back on. There's no audio on it, uh, but you can see it going through there. Let me see if I can, I don't think I can make it any bigger anyway, even if I do. Yeah, I made it a little bigger. So there's Jennifer Soto's res residence in the gated entry. This footage was taken by Kate and um, I'm going to put her link right now in the channel. Well, there's a link to this, but it's Kate Takes. And um, she's in the chat right now, which is awesome. Thank you, Kate. 
There's a link to the video. You guys flood her page. Let me look at what. Let me see what her. Uh, yeah. Look at her page. Please only donate if you have the means. Liking, sharing, and subscribing is a free way to support the channel. So down below I have my PayPal, my Cash App, my Venmo. But if you can't, then don't. I don't want you or anyone struggling. There's the drive to the church. Location stated to have stopped her off in the morning. So that was the church where they said, that doesn't make sense anyway. That looks pretty far from anything to even walk out of the parking lot. Really weird. Yeah, there's Kate Takes Channel, everybody. Awesome, awesome footage. There's Osceola County Jail, where Stefan Stearns is. Um, we're on a loop now of this. We played it earlier, so if you're here in the chat and you missed it, yeah, the grandma's house is beautiful. Too bad everything on the inside wasn't so beautiful. It's, it's really unfortunate. Thank you for subbing to Kate Takes. She's awesome. Thank you for smashing that like button. Absolutely. Proof that money does not buy happiness. And that poor little girl, Madeline Soto, is the only reason that I'm here and you're here right now. It's because we want justice for Maddie. Um, it's not about the likes or subscribes or trying to make money. I, I'm not making any money off of any of this. And um, I just want to bring this to you and keep it alive. And um, yeah, hit that like button in the honor of Kate. She's great for showing us this information. And you can see over there off to the right, it's the way to the memorial there could have been other places that Stefan Stearns dumped her body. Look it off to the right area. They might not have seen her. People might not have found her so quickly had it not been that for the flat tire. That I believe he had a flat tire and it wasn't a ruse. Because why wouldn't you put her somewhere like that where it was more hidden? It doesn't make sense. You do rock, Kate. Thank you so much. And yeah, she did look very unhappy on her 12th birthday. And even on her 13th birthday, everybody, she didn't look like she was ecstatic about, like her mom said, her presence. You can't see any pictures? What do you mean, Sandra? I'm playing a video. And Joyce, that would be great. Anybody that wants to translate that video from Spanish to English, if you would send me an email. Um, I have my Venmo there. Hold on, let me put my email up. Let's see. I put Venmo instead of that. One second. Guilty of crime by J at gmail.com. Guilty. Crime by J at Gmail. And there's the still on the way to the memorial. Once we get there, then you're going to see that love and support for Madeline Soto and why we want to keep this thing alive and make sure that it doesn't go cold. Everybody, we don't want it to go cold. That's a pretty long drive. Wow. Wow. Kate and I talked about. Um, the fact that there was no reason for Stefan Stearns to be out there. Now, there's the out there part of it. There's the memorial, and now we know that the dump site was across the street from that, everybody. Um, it was across the street, not six miles, so we stand corrected on that. And he dumped her right where you can see. Like, I, I don't even know the across the street part, how he did that or what happened, but really odd spot. I don't think it was a ruse. I'm sure it was a flat tire that actually happened. And if it was across the street, then we definitely know it's just across the street that he probably had a flat tire, changed it and then dumped her before. So nobody would see it. Maybe it was still dark outside. I, I don't know. I don't have that footage. Mom worked at Disney, so she was home full-time during COVID shutdown. 
That is very good, Bassett, baby. That's a good question. Mom, I'm going to say it again. Mom worked at Disney. So she was home full time during COVID shutdown. So she didn't see anything then. Hmm. There was no Disney and no school. Think about that, everybody. Think about that again. 2018, she was seeing Stefan Stearns. Um, that's a good question. Very good question. Just think about that. I don't think it needs an answer. Let's see. I, I saw a question. Question, guys. How long do you simmer your turkey's carcass? <laughs> oh man, I thought it was. I thought we were talking about. That's funny. You're funny, Carly. Somebody answer that woman. She does a great job modding. All right, there's the memorial site. Thank you, Kate, for bringing this to us. You're amazing. And look at the love that's there. Look at that memorial site, everybody. That the poor Madeline. I believe the flat tire, Millie Isaac says, I believe the flat tire was God bringing the truth to the light so she'd be found and can rest in peace. Fly high. We'll never forget you, sweet angel. That's right. Madeline Soto, rest in peace. You are gone far too soon. And um, thank you so much, lady in red. We will not give up on Maddie. We're going to see this through. You'll get justice. You're welcome. Uh, at Carly, we appreciate you modding. Kate, you're amazing. This is Kate's footage, everybody. This is Kate that went on her own time and did some detective work and um, couldn't stop thinking about this case either, everybody. Kate is awesome, and she deserves to hear that. She deserves to be able to talk to us in the crime community about things on her mind. That she can't get off and then share her footage and let us see what we're talking about for us people that aren't local. Look at that memorial, everybody. That thing is massive. Um, People really did love Maddie. I mean, we haven't got to hear about the people from the birthday party yet. We saw some of them in the balloons. We know Stefan Stearns was there. I, I don't know why he was there. The grandma was correct in asking, why was Stefan Stearns there? Um, yeah, we don't know. We don't know why Jen just said, uh, hey, why, why don't you uh, take, I'm going to stop this because there's stuff at the end I don't want to show. Um, yeah, we don't, we don't know why a lot of things, but there's a lot of things we do know now. And we will confirm by the boots on the ground information. We know that Stephen Stearns probably had a flat tire because it was if it was right across the street, then he got a flat tire. It was a very busy area. It wasn't an area that you would stop and be hidden. He was trying to, I guess, hide in plain sight. And he thought, well, if I have to fix the flat, I got to dump her so nobody sees her body. And then we do know the birthday party was at Yolanda's by the pictures for sure. There's no questions about that anymore. We don't know why Yolanda isn't talking. We do know she knows some things more than she's saying. She was there at the birthday. She, Stefan Stearns was there with Maddie. Stefan Stearns brought Maddie to the party. And he took her home, everybody. Stefan brought Maddie to the party at Yolanda Soto's house, where her mom failed to be at the party. And then he took her home, everybody. Yeah, this family is very whack. Very whack. All of this stuff is just crazy. Now, I would definitely, if somebody could email me that asked to translate, that they offered to translate, I would love for you to translate that video. That would be great because the, the translation we have now sounds terrible and I can't hear everything. Florida may have the death penalty, but not everyone gets it. Remember Casey Anthony? Yes, we remember Casey Anthony way too well. If we get any bit of reasonable doubt, then we're done. Now, this doesn't have a lot of reasonable doubt, but nobody's been convicted in Maddie's murder yet. And not only that, why is the mom still even free? Why is Jennifer Soto free to get on... Uh, or is she? Why is she free to get on an airplane and go out of the country if she wants to or go across the country? Why? Yeah, if anyone has to, to if anyone has any information 
or wants to email me or wants to translate that can, I'd be grateful. Guilty of crime by Jay at gmail.com. Why did she lie to media and police if she couldn't remember seeing her? Yeah, there's so many things, everybody. Um, yeah, we, we don't know. We we can't we can't explain, but what we can explain is what we saw today, what Kate brought us, and a lot of people that are in the area are helping us to um to uncover some things, you know, there's always local area things that we don't know from the outside. So yeah, the death penalty applies to kids under the issue with the death penalty here is it applies to kids under 12. Yeah, I agree with that. That's a, that's a, that doesn't make sense if you can't vote or go to the military, but you can get the death penalty. I don't know. It's, it's the justice system is weird. It doesn't work the way it's always supposed to. Um, okay, so as we're wrapping up, yeah, I'm reading your questions and and uh, people are starting to drop out. As you drop out, please hit that like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Everybody down there, hit that button so that we can get this out there. And and this this video reached so many people on the last live that Kate was able to see me and reach out to me and give me that footage. So the more people we can get to, the better. Um, Yeah, thank you all so much. I think I, I'm going to wrap up on having 506 people in the chat. Maligator, hello, how are you? As we're wrapping up, Brita, you're new to the channel. and the chat, you heard from a different channel that she worked from home. Only one pick of her bedroom was in the group, but the condo had four. So there's a lot of questions, there's some answers, and we're going to come back and do more. On that note, I'm happy with this big chat and with the information that we've gotten today and that we've gotten out there. Please re-watch this, follow, like, subscribe, go to Kate's channel, and on that note, we're at it. Guilty of crime. I want to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed my content, please share this video like and subscribe you can also follow me over at facebook instagram tiktok x or gmail if you'd like to donate to my channel you can use cash app or venmo or paypal thank you very much in advance guilty of crime are you guilty of crime